Hi, in this video I will go through all the elements of this cash flow model template and we explain how to make the most of it. So uh, let's start with this, this structure. So we have the PL and the cash flow in the monthly version, the first two pages, and then we have the annualized version, the third and the fourth pages. So the annualized version is just basically an aggregation sum over the month of the previous two. So let's focus on the first on the first two pages. The monthly uh, PNL is just like as you may know, uh, revenue minus cost. Super easy. So you need to input all the all the revenue here minus returns, discount in the first table, and then all the cost in the in the in the second table until you get the EBITDA. The EBITDA represent the earning before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So to get to the net income, so the, the last line of your of our PNL, you need to subtract the, the event like potential depreciation and amortization net interest or taxes in case you are you are profitable uh, just have a, um, let's have a look quickly look to the to the cost structure so here we are we are we are intercompany so in the cogs in the cost of goods sold we put all the hosting the payment and the support and everything is actually needed to sell the, uh, the the cost directly associated to selling the product then you have the uh, the you have the gross margin which represents like the revenue minus cogs and represents somehow the profitability uh, of your product so how your product is able to cover the rest the remaining costs and the remaining costs are just like typical marketing and sales variable costs and then the overhead the fixed cost basically people in the general management technology go to market admin office uh, team let's now focus on the cash flow so the cash flow here we are using the um, indirect method to compute this gfo the cash flow from an operating activity the cash flow from an operating activity is is represents the all the cash flow the inflow and outflow of cash that actually linked to the op core business of the company so creating building product and selling product and we are uh, we when we say that we use the indirect method is just because we start we don't look at the bank account basically but we start from the net income and then we adjust this value to take into account costs or that has not or revenues that are not being realized yet so they're not being cashed in or cashed out yet or basically they or simply they don't uh, refer to a specific uh, cash um, inflow or outflow. For example, let's go look at the depreciation and amortization. Depreciation, by definition, is, is a cost which is part of your cost of your of your PNL, but it's not uh, linked to any cash outflow. So in this in this case, if there is some amortization, we need to add back to the net income. It's by the same token, if we have like issued an invoice which has not been paid yet or if you have an invoice from a provider which has not been paid yet, in both cases there is no impact on 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 the on the uh, on the ca on the, at the cash flow level, but they are respectively computed in the in the revenue or in the costs. So in both cases, we need to adjust the 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 the, the net income to take into account this. In particular, if you have an outstanding invoice which has not been paid yet. Um, that is accounting in the revenue but is not cashed in so we need to reduce we need to subtract it from the net income on the other way around we need to uh, we need to do the opposite in case of a, of a, of, a, of an invoice which has not been paid yet uh, from from a provider a provider then we go to the um, the, we go to the monthly um, uh, cash flow from investing and this is basically in when everything in the investment side is basically asset purchase minus asset sales so if you if you purchase a new server or 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 some new computers in the company this is capex and this must be accounted in the asset purchase and if you sell something we need to account it as asset sale and the difference is just net cash from investing and then we have the finance and this finance is probably, probably most relevant for your startup here you need to include all the debt issuance all the stock issuance if you raise new money you need to uh, probably you will you will issue preferred stock so you need to uh, uh, add some uh, some uh, uh, proceeds from 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 those issues those issuance and then maybe you want to pay dividend at some point so these are these will be subtracted from from the cash flow so everything related to the financing part should be put here in the, in the CFF. And then you get the net cash from financing activity, basically summing over all these elements. And the monthly cash flow, the overall one, is just the sum of the three CFF, CFI, and CFO. That's it. Enjoy.